April and May were some of the worst months we've seen in a long time for data jobs. Fortunately, the market does appear to be rebounding, as you can see from my last video. Still, if months like these rear their ugly heads again, what should you do? These are the most actual things that you can do to help you change your employment situation based on my experience and the experience of many data scientists that I've interviewed or talked to. These can help you increase your chances of success, whether you're a new data scientist trying to break into the market, or if you're an experienced data scientist who was caught in the last wave of layoffs. Let's get into it. This is probably a little cringy, but first, I think you should take a deep breath and reframe this problem. I'm a firm believer that the data science skill set and the ability to problem solve are valuable no matter what you do. Anyone who's pursuing this domain in earnest is inherently highly employable. Also, ask yourself this question. What might you do if you weren't pursuing data science or another technical career? Are other career options more reliable or are they better than data science? From the research I found, the tech sector unemployment rate is still quite a bit lower than the overall unemployment rate. We're looking at around 2% compared to roughly three and a half percent for the overall unemployment rate. Landing a job in technology is still a decent bet if you have at least some relevant skills. If you enjoy the domain and you've already put in a reasonable amount of time learning it, it's likely better to use this time to continue down this path rather than try to switch careers. Switching careers would mean that you'd have to learn new skills, make new connections, and invest time in that domain. If you're really struggling, there's nothing wrong with going to work for a family member, finding a job waiting tables, or something along those lines. Realistically, you could still do these things while you're also applying to new positions and learning new things about the data domain. While it might be a struggle now, in reality, the only people who don't land data jobs are the ones that stop trying and stop applying, or the ones that don't make it. All right, well, maybe that didn't come off as motivating as I wanted it to. Let's try something else. What's your approach to landing a job? How many resumes have you sent out? How many cold emails? How many networking events have you been to? What's your hit rate for emails and for applications? Have you even been keeping track? The funny thing is that most people applying don't treat the application process like a data science job. They don't leverage their analytical skills at all during this process. Let's say you've sent out 400 resumes via job boards and you've gotten two interviews. And in both of those interviews, you've made it to the final round, passing the technical screen, but then you got rejected. What does this data tell us? You have a 1 in 200 or a 0.5% interview hit rate from sending out resumes. You have a 100% success rate for the first few rounds of interviews, including the technical one, and a 0% success rate at final rounds. Now, based on this, what should you work on? So first, a 0.5% hit rate is low compared to the baseline of around 2% that I've seen from companies like Interview Query and Sharpest Minds. You might wanna start by first improving your resume or trying different channels like cold email reach out to increase this number. That would really be the first step that I would recommend for this person since the other rounds of interviews seem to have a very small sample size and they've done reasonably well in those. Now let's say this person was getting 3% callbacks but failed the technical screen every time. I think it's pretty obvious what this person would need to work on to improve their chances. Treating the interview process like a job serves two purposes. First, it gives you highly actionable things to improve your chances. And second, it takes the emotion out of the process. I know firsthand how bad it sucks to bomb an interview or to not hear back from a job that you are really, really excited about. Looking at the job process through this macro lens, it reduces the sting of these individual rejections. To help gather some data for you all and help out your fellow learners, let me know in the comments the real number of jobs that you've applied to and what your interview hit rate is. I think that could help people collect a little data and understand where they're at in their journey. The next thing I recommend doing also happens to involve data. So let's say you're a statistician that worked heavily with the statistical computing tool SPSS. Unfortunately, SPSS has dramatically reduced in popularity in industry over the last five or so years. What should you do? Should you try to upskill and find tools that are more in demand, or should you keep looking for SPSS roles that are vanishing rapidly? I think the answer is obvious. It doesn't make sense to keep pursuing a tool that's disappearing, even if you have some really good expertise in it. On the other hand, I see people doing this all the time in the data domain. Data science positions have now been spread across data analyst, data engineering, and machine learning engineering roles, yet many people only really apply to data science positions, which is the position that is actually shrinking the most 
in relative job openings compared to the other ones. This isn't to say that data science is dead or dying, it's just to say that the role and the field is getting more specialized overall. If you're struggling to land a data position, perhaps explore data engineer, data analyst, or BI analyst roles. As you might have seen in my other video on the job market, there's especially an abundance of data engineering roles that companies are hiring for. If that still isn't working, maybe it's time to just take a break from the job search altogether. If you have some financial cushion, or you can move in with your parents for a little bit, I might be guilty of this. <laughs> that could be the best possible time to upskill. At least for people who are already working, we often don't get much time dedicated to learning and improving our skills as much as we truly like. And as it turns out, just learning can also help you bring job opportunities to you. If you're gonna dedicate time to upskilling, I highly recommend that you do that learning in public. That is to say, build in public, share what you're learning, whether it's on social media, whether it's a blog, whatever it might be. Also focus on learning technologies and skills that are desirable in the marketplace. Vector databases, uh, tools like Langchain, and some of these other things that leverage large language models are gonna be really useful and valuable in a new world augmented by language models. If you're interested in those, why not dive in and build stuff? Speaking of building stuff, if you've always wanted to start a company, if you're unemployed, why not? It actually looks really good on a resume if you built a product, if you've gotten customers, and you even get a gold star if you made some money in the process. There are a lot of ways to make money or to start a business with the data science skill set. For example, you could do contract work, you could write a blog, or you could even start a YouTube channel. Those are just things that I've seen work or I've personally worked with. I also think that the lowest barrier to entry, again, from my experience, is writing on Medium. So my first Medium blog I think I ever wrote made me 20 bucks, and that was before I had any audience that I do now. I now know more than five people firsthand who have landed jobs directly from content that they published on their blogs or on Medium, and I know five more people that went either full-time writing or contracting after trying out writing and blogging in the first place. I actually have a new video planned on contracting and why I think it actually might be superior to the full-time job. If you're interested in seeing that, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be alerted when that one drops. Now, this is likely the most controversial recommendation that I'll make. Rather than apply to more jobs, I recommend that you actually apply to less. Niching down on your process can dramatically increase your odds of landing a job. Let's explore why. So jobs are a maximization problem. You need to be the best candidate or one of the best candidates to land the role. Being the 10th best candidate in 100 jobs will likely never land you a role even though you're in the 90th percentile of candidates. On the other hand, if someone is in the top three best candidates for 10 jobs and the bottom half of the remaining, they'll still likely land at least one offer. You wanna maximize your chances at few rather than being slightly better across the board at all of the companies you're applying to. You're probably saying, Ken, that's easier said than done. What does this look like in concrete terms? First, I recommend choosing three domains that you really enjoy and have good knowledge about. Go all in on creating data products related to them and learning their domains. And then only apply to the companies that are in that corner of the world. You very well might be the best candidate for the role. You have the most domain knowledge compared to everyone else. And to clarify, this can be a subject area domain like agriculture or a technical domain like computer vision, NLP, inference, whatever it might be. Okay, so for the next one, this video is getting kind of long. So I'm gonna be brief with this. And I already talked about it at length in another video that I've linked above. So definitely check that out if you want the full scoop. The gist is that people are important and rather than networking, you can bring people to you. So you can do this by creating content, podcast, any reason to talk with relevant people. You also shouldn't ask anything from these people except for their advice. This is a great way to make friends as well as business connections. And often if they know you're searching for a job, they'll be your advocates and help you source opportunities to you. Okay, now that that one's out of the way, let's talk about my final action item. And this might come as a surprise. I want you to think about if a career in data science or tech is really for you. If you've been working in this domain already, you probably can evaluate if you've enjoyed it so far. And if you're new, you've probably been focusing so hard on learning and building portfolios that you haven't taken the time to even calculate or evaluate if you've enjoyed what you're doing in the first place. You might find that, hey, I was meant to do this, I love this, and I really wanna dig in. Or you might find that you wanna go another direction. Either way, you knew sooner rather than later, and you didn't waste all this extra time and effort going down a path that you might regret later. What most people working in tech forget is that in literally every other profession, if you can code, people think that you have a superpower. If you find a love for marketing, for finance, for journalism, your data science experience can be a major selling point for your employability in those domains. Again, it's amazing if this career is for you, 
And for most of you watching, it probably is, but there's also nothing wrong with going a different path if that's what calls to you. If this video was helpful, please let me know. Also, please feel free to share it with anyone that you know is struggling with this. I'm rooting for you all. Till next time, good luck on your data science journey.